pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts, O Lord our God, be acceptable unto thee, O Lord our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. First, I want to affirm Kolebu Community Chapel. Community, Kolebu Community Chapel is uh, probably the only church congregation. Kolebu Community Chapel is probably the only uh, church congregation that in this country that observes a month-long missions emphasis. Oh, clap for yourself. <laughs> It also has a special opportunity for intergenerational ministry. Good stuff. I'm very happy that you didn't read the passage today. Your son will only have to read it. <laughs> we thank God for that. And um, and I want to affirm you, members of the congregation of. Uh, Kolebu Community Chapel, Kolebu Community Church, that your own professional work is also missions work. My friend, uh, Dr. Kobina and Cheche, Professor Kobina and Cheche, was being pulled, attracted to candidate as a, a pastor for the Methodist Church. I was one of those who advised him against it. <laughs> and I said, you are in ministry at Kolibu. <laughs> in some cases, yes, it's okay. But I want to thank God that your profession is also your ministry. Amen. Mr. Money. Police headquarters. He is in ministry at that police headquarters. And Kolebu community church members have a huge ministry here. Have a, ministry, a huge ministry that they are doing professionally already. In their, your various professions at Kolebu and outside of Kolebu. And you see... And we encourage you to continue in your great work. If there were a medical condition that I have to attend to, either of myself, my family, or people who often call me and say, look, can you give us guidance and direction to a medical person if I throw a stone into Kolebu Community Chapel, I'm more likely to hit one of the consultants, the appropriate consultant. Amen? This week, I just had a clearance about some medical condition that, you know, they thought I needed to watch. Um, I tried to do the physicals, what the physicians call, the doctors call the physicals in America. When I travel outside, I try to do medical exam. And this time around, March, I, I went to the U.S. and I did medical exams. And they tested my heart and they said, there are some issues there. I should come back and do further tests. So I came and did further tests at cardiothoracic center. The physiology, physiology, cardio, whatever. What is his name? Dr. Doku. And then later, Dr. Siribo. The first test was okay. The second one said, mm-mm, not too okay. So I need to do a third, listen, test, uh, whatever. Angiogram. 
or whatever, what is, hmm? what is the thing, Kura? Uh, Akai, oh. Oh. Anyway. They had to do a test, I had to pay 10 million CDs, old CDs. Um, scan of my heart and all that I've just seen. So I went to see the doctor who referred me to all these things, uh, Ajuko Hese, just last Friday. And he said, oh, what we thought was there, there's nothing. Oh, continue your normal life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Earlier on, Dr. Siribo also examined all of that. And part of the my normal course of doing all those distances, I, I'm yet to come to uh, Dr. Matthew Che. I told him the other time I would be coming. I mean, it's maybe some others like Steve. You are doing ministry. You are doing ministry. In the next few minutes, what I wanted to speak upon, maybe some other time, we'll have opportunity to expatiate on this passage. Is every believer an evangelist or missionary? Is every believer an evangelist or missionary? And in the passage read for us, the Apostle Paul describes a believer as an ambassador of Christ. A believer as what? An ambassador of Christ. And what are the characteristics of an ambassador of Christ? If you are a genuine believer, you are an ambassador of Christ. And what are the characteristics of an ambassador of Christ in this passage? I propose to mention only three, actually. That was what I was going to speak on, but to expatiate on each one of the three ones. One, his or her motivation. Two, his or her mandate or task. And three, his or her message. Motivation, mandate, message of an ambassador of Christ. Firstly then, his or her motivation. The Apostle Paul here mentions two critical things and a response based on those two critical things. In verse 10, he says, there is a day of review and reward. Verse 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, he says, for we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good we have done or the evil we have done in this earthly body, in our earthly pilgrimage. Friends, there is a day for review and rewards. And the ambassador of Christ must take this seriously. The believer, the genuine believer must take this seriously. For himself and for the whole of the community in which he lives. We are not just passing through. Everyone will have to face the judgment seat of Christ. And what will be God's declaration concerning them, Christ's declaration concerning them, this must involve us in evangelism and missions. There is a day of review and rewards. Secondly, he says, Christ's love controls us. Christ's love controls us. Verse 14. Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. Christ's love controls us. That 
was the motivation of Paul. That should be the motivation of every believer. Christ's love on Calvary's cross. And the experience of that love. In making you a new creation. As said in verse 17. He who is in Christ is what? A new creation. The old has passed. The new has begun. And if you have really experienced, meditated, meditated on Christ's love on the cross, the sacrificial love of Jesus, he did not count equality with God a thing to grasp, but he emptied himself and took upon himself the form of a servant and went on to die the most shameful death. And Isaiah 53 will say of him. Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 6. It was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. His love. His love. And we have experienced that love. If you are a genuine believer, you have experienced that love. You have tasted of the divine nature. And you have no business keeping your mouth shut. But to encourage others to come and taste of that love also. Amen. And therefore in verse 15 he says, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says what? In verse 15 he says, He died for everyone that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. You are to no longer live for yourself. He died for me, that I, Kwame Hama, will not pursue only my own puny personal agenda, but to live for Jesus, who died for me and was raised again from the dead. Hallelujah. That is the motivation of the ambassador of Christ. Every genuine believer, no matter your professional calling, some of us are called to preach full time. Some of you are called to do ento- uh, what? ophthalmology full time. But all of us are called into ministry. Hallelujah. So, number one, uh, let me quickly run up. Number one, his motivation. Number two, what? His. Uh, Mandate. I was going to spend a little bit more time on this one, but I have to do it in one minute. If you took out a currency, a coin or a paper, a currency from your pocket, and you look at it closely, it has what? Two sides. If you are minting coins in the factory, it has two sides. Any coin that you take and there's nothing at one side. It is not a what? A genuine currency is counterfeit. Hello? And I was going to do an exercise with each one of us. But time is gone. Look at verse 18. What has happened to the genuine believer? Verse 18. Is verse 18 on the screen? What two things is there, are there that has happened to the believer? To every one born of the Spirit of God, what has happened to him? What has happened to him? Two, two things. Yes, talk to me now. Okay, reconcile to Christ, number one, and also what? Given a ministry of reconciliation. All genuine Christian believers have two sides. At conversion, two specific things have happened to the believer. He has been reconciled, brought back into fellowship, a deep, a special relationship with Jesus, number one. But he has also been commissioned to bring others back to Jesus. 
The two happen at the same time. According to biblical teaching, you don't take one and leave the other so that not all can be evangelists, but all genuine believers are to be soul winners. So, you know, Dr. Zachariah and his wife must be soul winners in their medical practice. My friend Doku must be a soul winner in his profession. All of us must be soul winners. In I ordered a dollar. A soul reconciled to Jesus must necessarily, biblically, be a reconciler of others to Jesus. That is the kernel of what I wanted to share today. You are, you must be a soul winner. You must necessarily be involved in missions and evangelism. What why, how to, that's a discussion we can go in. Finally, the message, verse 21. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That is the message. Every genuine believer is an ambassador. An ambassador is a messenger of God. An ambassador of Christ is a messenger of Christ. And we have only one message. Really, we have only one message. And that message is summarized in verse 21. Bible scholar says, you know, atonement of Christ is best summarized in the New Testament in this verse. I do not have time now to expatiate on it. But listen, I'll read from the New Living International Version and I then conclude here. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. That is the good news. He paid the debt I could not pay. I owe a debt I could not pay, but someone paid it all for me. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin left a crimson stain on me. We can reduce missions and evangelism will reduce in part of the work of uh, what? Dr. Ohini? Where is Dr. Ohini? Give me a wave. A number of people are in the psychiatric uh, you know, uh, hospital because uh, they have refused to forgive themselves and to forgive others. And it has gone to clinical proportions. Dr. Hine, I'm told that all of us are messed up a little bit small. <laughs> so you don't have to go, you don't have to be to reach a high clinical proportion before you go and see him to sort you out. Maybe I have to come and have a conversation with you one of these days. But we commend your work also. I have to refer people to him and others there also. Praise the Lord. He who knew no sin became sin for you. That you and me will be clothed with the righteousness of God. That at that day when we enter heaven's gate and knock, Peter will be there. Say, on what basis should I let you in? I say, on the basis of the shed blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. Then he said, Jude, come in. I say, yes. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Ah. And so like Second Kings chapter 7, we should be like those lepers who went and found the booty and they were enjoying Say, saying, what we are doing here is no good. Let us go back to the city and invite others to come and enjoy this. Are you enjoying the Lord Jesus of Nazareth as your Savior and God? Do you have peace in your heart? Would you consider today and every day of your life 
praying for somebody, giving to missions, speaking to somebody, that they too may come and test the love of Jesus. God bless you in so doing. Amen. Be a genuine Christian. The two sides must be there. Reconcile to Christ. Reconciling others to Christ. Shall we bow for prayer? Shall we pray? Father, I want to thank you for the lessons we have learned from the life of Pastor Jude Hammer. We thank you for his own ministry, and we thank you for the challenge that he has thrown to us in terms of morality, in terms of living a life that characterizes you, not just to profess it. We also thank you for the lessons he's taught us, ending with the fact that not only are we supposed to be reconciled to you, but for the joy, the peace that we have, we should also encourage other people and speak to them that they will also be reconciled to God. And that is our message. Help us fulfill this even in this month. 